Hi, Matt from Modern Samurai here again, and today on Self Defense Made Simple, we're going to be looking at the three fights to any fight. So, what do I mean by that? Well, whenever we talk about a, a actual fight, all right, so whether that's competition, whether that's in the ring, whether that's outside, whether that's, you know, um, doesn't matter what type of fight it is, there are always three fights to any fight. Now, if we're looking at sport, if we're looking at competition, then we have two of the same. So the first fight is the psychological fight, and so that's the first thing that we need to address. The second fight, that's the physical fight. And so those two remain the same within a sporting context, okay? And then when we look at the third one, which is the legal fight, now that's obviously a little different in the outside world. So if we're looking at an arranged contest, a sport, a competition, now the third fight on that may be ego. That could be something like, you know, you, you've, you've won quite a few things recently, you're getting a bit carried away with yourself, uh, you're, you're becoming a little too big for your own boots. And again, we'll talk about all of that a bit more as we go along. But what we're discussing here is the three fights to any fight. So the psychological, we need to understand how it affects the mind, how it affects the body, how we react to fear, what it does to us. We need to understand how our movement is affected, how our thought processes are affected, how we will react under stress, under duress, in genuine fear, because it's not the same as how we would react in a, in a dojo, in a sports hall, okay? In those kind of areas where we're used to being, where we practice in a sanitized fashion, then the psychological side of it isn't very often addressed and that's something that we're going to look at today because when it comes to self-defense it is something that needs to be addressed and it's something that needs to be looked at because if we don't get this bit right the rest of it will quite quickly fall apart okay and then the second part of this is the physical fight now again we're we're hoping to learn some skills along the journey we're hoping to learn some skills along the way but again your physical skills are whatever system you practice whatever you already have in your toolbox so obviously as an example if you do a striking system predominantly it'll be striking if you do a grappling art then it'll predominantly be grappling okay so whatever uh, thing that you do, wh however you train and whichever skill base you have, that will be your go-to approach. So one of the things that we're going to look at during this series is what we're going to try and do is we're going to aim to um, enhance some of the things that people already know and hopefully show a few things that uh, people don't know that they can add on. So if you have a, um, a sporting application, shall we say, so if you're a a sport fighter, then there are elements to your physical skills that will need to be adjusted to work in the outside world. So it's not that, you know, these guys can't punch and kick really strongly or grapple really strongly or all of those things, they can, but they're done within a skill set and with certain protective uh, requirements and referees and so on and so forth, okay? And so when we look at the physical side of things, then we need to understand why that is different in a self-defense environment. And then thirdly, the legal side of things. Now, as we've just discussed here, when we're talking about the legalities of something, quite often what we see is, an, is, is lots of different martial arts instructors and lots of different styles. They'll teach lots of different ways to really do somebody harm, uh, but they won't necessarily teach people the laws regarding that, okay? Now, that's something that we need to address and we need to understand because we may have got the first two right, we may have survived the first two, but we're still going to have this third fight on our hands. Now, that could be an easier process if we understand the laws that we're working with, right? So things like, you know, making sure that we are filling the statements out correctly, we're saying the right things, we're reacting in the right ways, okay? Uh, quite often people end up getting themselves into trouble because they don't understand why they did what they did. Okay, so we're going to look at these three things. We're going to look at them in a little bit of depth and we're going to go through them all and hopefully by the end of this tutorial um, we'll have a better understanding of what those three fights are that actually make up the one fight as a whole. So the first of the three fights then is the psychological fight. Now, we can't really look towards the other fights until we get through the fight that we're in. So what I mean by that is it's counterproductive to think about the legal ramifications if you can't survive the psychological fight or the physical fight. There's no point in worrying about being arrested if you've been kicked silly and are lying in a hospital bed with tubes sticking up your nose. Okay, so 
Again, I'm not saying dismiss the legal side of it completely, but what I'm saying is that these things have to be taken in the right order. And what, oft, what you'll often see these days is um, people will say, you cannot do this, or you can do that, or you can't do the other, or this is allowed and that's not allowed, and you really shouldn't do that. Um, for my personal belief, I would say that whatever is necessary to get you home safe, um, and then, then you have to worry about what comes later. Okay, but that's my personal take on that because you, can't, you just can't rely on people anymore. You can't leave yourself at the mercy of the goodness of people's hearts because you've only got to open a newspaper or turn on the television to see you know, people being beaten to death, people being kicked and stabbed. I mean, the murder rates are sky high. In this day and age, you cannot just leave yourself as a victim. All right? it's, it's, it's just you're putting yourself at the mercy of some, of some horrible people out there, okay? And I don't know whether that society as a whole or what, that's a wider problem and something that I'm not sure I have the answer to. But um, what I will say is in this day and age, we need to protect ourselves as much as we possibly can. You know, police budgets are being cut, support is being cut, court services are being cut, everything's being cut, everything's less and less. There's less chance of criminals being caught, there's less chance of criminals being prosecuted, uh, there's far more chance of people being physically assaulted in this day and age. Um, again, the figures are rising and rising and rising, no matter how much the government try to manipulate them to pretend it's not as bad as it actually is. Um, there, you know, there are certain parts of the country now that are more or less no-go zones, and it's, you know, it's rough out there, especially if you're a kid. Growing up these days as a teenager, you know, as a young guy or a young girl, is really, really difficult. I don't envy them that, you know? So, what we're looking at then is the different types of the fight and how we're going to um, understand each particular portion of that and its relevance to the whole.